Section 3 from Unit 5 is going to take stoichiometry and put it into practice. In the second section, we talked about how to create mole ratios using the coefficients from a balanced equation. Here, we're going to show how we actually do the math with stoichiometry. Uh, it's, it's, again, basically like how do we know how much of something to add in a recipe. Okay, so that's the idea here. So stoichiometric mole-to-mole -mole conversions. The mole ratios and the coefficients can be used to determine amounts of substances present before and after a chemical reaction. So in this example here, two potassium atoms plus two water molecules gives us two, this is potassium hydroxide, KOH, plus one uh, H2 molecule, okay? Uh, so we know that if we have two moles of potassium that are reacting, it will yield, that's what this arrow means, it will yield one mole of H2, it will produce one mole of H2. But what if we only had, say, like 0 0.0400 moles of potassium? Okay, what we use are the mole ratios. Okay, so before I talk about how we solve a stoichiometry problem, it'd be wise to go ahead and screenshot these steps. So, steps to solving any stoichiometry problem. Number one, begin by writing down whatever number uh, and its unit was given to you in the problem. Okay, so there'll have to be some sort of number given to you. Number two, convert this number to moles if it's not already in moles. So this is going to be dividing by the molar mass of that substance. Sometimes you'll be given a number in moles, at which point you do not have to do step two. So step two is uh, it's optional depending on whether the substance is already in moles or not. Okay, step three, multiply by the correct mole ratio from the coefficients in the balanced equation. We'll show you how to set these up and practice a few times, but you will always do step three. Step three is always done, okay? So you always multiply by a mole ratio. Regardless of whether we do steps two or four, you will always have a mole ratio. The ratio is set up with the moles of what you are looking for on the top divided by the moles of the given substance on the bottom. And this is gonna go all the way back to dimensional analysis of us trying to cancel units, which you will see. Uh, and we'll get plenty of practice setting these up. Then number four, convert the moles to grams if the problem wants an answer of mass. So if the problem says, what is the mass of product X? Okay, that means you will need to multiply times the molar mass of that final substance, okay? And then the last thing to do is make sure you use correct significant figures and the correct unit in your answer. Okay, so these are the five steps to solving this. Steps two and four, depending on the type of problem, are optional. Steps one, three, and five, you should always do. We're going to start with the simplest type of stoichiometry problem, a mole-to-mole -mole conversion, where the problem gives you an initial number in moles and wants an answer in moles. This is the simplest type of stoichiometry problem, uh, and we will skip steps two and four, okay, on our steps for solving stoichiometry problems. We don't have to do those because there's no nothing coming from grams and there's nothing going back into grams, okay? So here's the problem. It says, how many moles of H2 gas, I should say, are produced when 0 0.0400 moles of potassium are used in the reaction. So here's our balanced equation. Two potassium plus two water yields two potassium hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. And step one is to write down whatever number is given to you in the problem. We were given 0 0.0400 moles of potassium. So that's my initial value. Okay, it's in moles, so this was step one. Step two is convert that value to moles if it's not in moles. It's already in moles, so I can skip step two. I go immediately to step three, which is a mole ratio, okay? It's what we are looking for over what we were given. Now, we were given potassium, okay? So it's going to be moles of K on the bottom. Change that back to color you can see. Okay, it's going to be moles of K on the bottom. Uh, and on the top, it's going to be moles of what we are looking for, which in this problem is H2. Now, as far as what values go here, we look at the balanced equation, okay? So what's in front of H2 is a 1, right? There's nothing there, so it's a 1. What's in front of potassium? That's a 2, so we're going to put the 2 there, okay? So these numbers come from the balanced equation. It's the substance you're looking for over the substance you were given, okay? Step four would be to turn this back into grams if it wants an answer in grams. But the question says, how many moles? So we, we don't need to do step four. So we get to sk skip steps two and four in this problem. Uh, and, and this is it. It's really just 
0 0.0400 moles of K times 1 mole of H2 over 2 moles of K. So it's really divided by 2, and that's going to be it. So you just have to be careful, though, because if you plug this into a calculator, your calculator is just going to say 0 0.02, okay? Uh, and we need to base our answer of significant figures off of the number over here. There are three significant figures in this number, so my answer better have three. So you need to do the, the mental uh, reminder of let's add two zeros to that so that it does have three significant figures. Uh, and just so that you can see it, uh, your units will cancel out. Moles of K cancel, uh, and your unit here, moles of H2, well, that's what the problem was asking you to solve for, how many moles of H2. So we have the correct unit. This is oftentimes called a one-step problem because the only step you have to do is the mole ratio. That's it. So it's just initial number times the mole ratio gives us an answer. And that's if it's a mole-to-mole -mole type of conversion. The next type of stoichiometry problem we will call a two-step problem. Uh, it's either a mole-to-mass conversion or a mass-to-mole conversion. Usually you'll see moles-to-mass. Uh, right? You're going to see moles to grams or grams to moles. Usually it's this, this first option. Okay, uh, But now we're going to do four out of the five steps. The last problem had three. This one's going to have four because at some point we're going to have grams in here. So we're going to need to convert something to mass of how much it actually weighs on a scale. So this says how much H2 gas is produced in grams from 0 0.0368 moles of potassium. So setting this up based on our rules, step one is always just to write down the, the value given to you, 0 0.0368 moles of K, okay? Uh, and then step two would be to convert that to moles if it's not in moles, but this is already in moles, so we get to skip step number two, okay? So we go straight to step number three, which is create the mole ratio. Again, it's substance you're looking for on the top over substance you were given on the bottom. We were given K, and if you're not sure which one you were given, let me change that back to a color that matches the rest of it. There we go. Okay, if you weren't sure which substance we were given, just look right here, right? What am I trying to cancel? What unit's going to cancel? And on the top, we're looking for the substance H2, hydrogen gas. And once again, we get those numbers right here off of the balanced equation. In front of H2 is nothing, so that's just a one. In front of potassium, there is a 2, so the ratio is 1 over 2. Okay, then it says how much H2 is produced in grams. So that means I need to convert the moles of H2, which if we look here, so far moles of K is canceled. Uh, and what I've, if I stopped the problem now, I'd have moles of hydrogen gas. But it wants grams of hydrogen gas. Well, to go from moles back to grams, I need to multiply times the molecular weight or molar mass or atomic weight, whatever you're teachers calling it, uh, of that substance to get myself back to grams. This is step four. So we're going to multiply times the molar mass of what you were looking for. Okay, so we type this into the calculator, 0 0.0368 times 1 over 2, or divided by 2, uh, times 2.02. .02. And I should cancel out the units here just so you see it. Moles of H2 is going to cancel since molar mass is grams per one mole of that substance the units for moles cancel, and I would have grams of H2, okay? Uh, to three significant figures, since this number has three significant figures, my answer should have three significant figures, it comes out 0 0.0372. Now, if you stop and notice, it, it's kind of similar to this number over here. Well, look at this. I mean, you're dividing by 2, and then you're multi multiplying by 2.02, it's going to be pretty similar to your initial number, but this is how much it weighs. This is how much uh, H2 gas would be produced by mass. So if you did this reaction and you started with this many moles, you could actually weigh the hydrogen gas or know how much you should produce before you even ran the reaction, which is kind of cool. Okay, and then finally we have our mass-to-mass -mass conversions. We often call these three-step problems. This is where the initial number is given to you in grams, and the final answer comes out in grams. Uh, once we get accustomed to stoichiometry problems, most of the stuff we're going to be doing are these three-step conversions, and you'll be pretty familiar with setting them up after you've done enough of them. So, uh, in this instance, we are going to use all the steps of solving stoichiometry problems, steps one through five. Now, we call it a three-step problem here because we have three parts in the middle to get us to an answer, but uh, we're going to do all the parts of it. So, let's read the question. It says, how much potassium in grams is used in the reaction below if 0.629 grams of hydrogen gas is produced. OK, 
Okay, so this time we're not starting with potassium. It's saying we made this much hydrogen gas. How much stuff did we start with? And our process is exactly the same. So step one, to write down the initial value, 0.629 grams of hydrogen gas. Okay. Uh, step two, all right, is to get that into moles. I need moles of this stuff. For in order for mole ratios to work, I have to convert these grams into moles. That's why we do this. You can't just skip the molar mass steps and multiply times a mole ratio if you were given things in grams or want answers in grams because mole ratios only work when things are converted into moles. So uh, the 0.629 grams of hydrogen gas will then be divided by the molar mass of the starting substance hydrogen, H2, two hydrogens. Uh, and notice how I've written it here. I know it's divided by molar mass. Really, I'm just multiplying times the reciprocal. Uh, in the previous page, you saw it as 2.02 grams of H2 over one mole of H2. Here, we're just saying it's times one mole of H2 per 2.02 grams of H2. It's the same thing. I'm just dividing. I'm just writing it as the reciprocal, okay? And if you notice here, the units for grams of H2 cancel, and that would put us into moles of H2. Then we need to set up our mole ratio, step three. Uh, I was given as a starting substance this time H2, so that's going to go on the bottom of my mole ratio. What I'm looking for is potassium, so that's going to go on the top. We're going to put moles of K on the top. And then we look at our balanced equation again to fill in the numbers. Hopefully you remember them from the previous slides. In front of potassium is a 2, and in front of the moles of H2 should be a 1. So my ratio this time is 2 over 1. And then, finally, since it wants the mass of potassium in grams, okay, I can't end leaving this in moles, right? So my moles of H2 have canceled, and I, if I stop the problem here, I would have moles of potassium as a final answer, but I want a mass of it, which means I need to, to get this back into grams, I need to multiply times the molar mass of what we're looking for. We're looking for potassium, so we need to multiply by that thing's molar mass, all right? Uh, I notice what happens here to the units, moles of K cancel, uh, and then the final unit would be grams of potassium. All right, we're going to go ahead and plug all that into the calculator uh, and then round it to three significant figures because of the three significant figures here, okay? Uh, and you should get from that 24.4 grams of potassium, okay? So it's... We're at the point where we should be able to know how much something weighs and, and what sort of ratios they react in. Uh, we can convert things into moles first if they're not in moles. Multiply times a mole ratio. You will always have a mole ratio step. And then if it wants an answer in grams, multiply it times the molar mass of what we're looking for at the very end. Okay, I've set this one up for you, uh, and I want you to do this one. So the first question says to balance the equation above. All right, you may need some, some paper to do this. Uh, balance the equation above. Get the correct coefficients. Make sure they're correct, because if they're not correct, you can't do the rest of this. All right, You're going to see a lot of the problems that come with this as you first have to balance an equation. So that's number one. Uh, problem number two is a one-step problem. Okay, This is a moles-to-moles -moles problem. If you read the directions on it, you'll see that it will say starting with moles and ending with moles. Problem number three is a two-step problem where you are given moles and wants an answer in grams. Okay. And then problem number four, this is a grams to grams conversion. So this is a three-step problem. So you got one example of each of them to try here, and they're all based off of this balanced equation. So go ahead and give that one a try. See how you do. Okay, so you should have balanced this two, three, two. Uh, and then... Problem number two was a one-step problem, so take your initial amount times the mole ratio. Here it's 2 over 3. To three significant figures, this should be 0 0.250 moles. Number three is a two-step problem. Uh, it's already given to you in moles, so you can go straight to the mole ratio. And then it wants a mass of I2, so you need to multiply times the molar mass of I2. And to three significant figures, 895 grams of I2. Problem number four, 200 grams of I2 turning into a mass of ALI3. So we're starting with our initial value given. Need to get that into moles, so divide by the molar mass of I2. Then multiply times the mole ratio of ALI3 over I2. And then multiplying times the molar mass of ALI3. We're going to use four significant figures since it's 200.0. We come up with 214.2. So hopefully you did pretty well there.